Hello everyone, myself Ritesh. I have five years of experience into data engineering and data analytics field. My key skills or key expertise are Power BI for reporting purpose, the database that is SQL. I have also have expertise into Azure Cloud, which includes uh, ETL that is Azure Data Factory, ADLS, Logic Apps and Databricks. I've been working for multiple MNCs since last five years. I've worked for retail, I've worked for automobile and I've also worked for cloud and technological domains. So today we are going to learn about what is ETL, why ETL is important and what all tools ETL has. We have multiple tools in ETL. ETL is nothing but extract, transform and load the data. So extracting the data as per our requirement from multiple data sources such as any any databases which includes Oracle, uh, SQL DB or uh, MongoDB or NoSQL DBs, maybe from flat files, CSVs or Excel files and from any of the uh, online websites using APIs. Nowadays, ETL is uh, a more demanding tool or you could say the use of ETL is used in every other aspect or every other industry. Let's uh, take an example of a tourism industry, uh, maybe a aviation industry. Both are interdependent on each other. So when tourism comes into picture, aviation comes into picture. So for every tourism industry, they can analyze their data for previous years which geographical locations were visited by multiple tourists so they can pull out the data from multiple data sources or in any of the uh, data warehouses they have they can extract the data they can transform or they can perform multiple operations there and then they can load that data in, into any of their particular data warehouses or target databases so that they can further use that data for analyzing what all geographical regions have a significant importance and they can provide multiple discounts or they can provide multiple offers to that geographical locations or the tourists visiting that spaces or tourists visiting that places. So if we consider any aviation industry, they can uh, pull out the data with the help of ETL process from their previously stored unstructured or structured databases. They can analyze which all routes they are using. And with the help of that data, they can give multiple discounts to a, a particular customer using or who is traveling frequently in that route. So this is the basic understanding of ETL. Uh, let's consider any other industry, maybe uh, uh, te te technological industry also, if they want to focus on particular uh, region, if they want to increase revenue in that particular region, they can analyze the data stored in their databases and they can pull out the data using ETL process, that is extraction of data from their structured or unstructured databases, transforming the data and loading the data into particular target sources so that they can further analyze the data. So the primary importance of ETL is it is being used in every other aspect. Once the data is extracted, transformed or where we perform multiple logic operations, that data is being stored into a centralized data warehouse, which is further used for creation of uh, metrics or KPIs answer our ad hoc questions if any of the questions if we come across any other questions if we come across any historical questions that how can we increase the business how can we increase the revenue where uh, a particular uh, component we are lacking behind we can analyze the data with the help of the data which with the help of historical data which we have stored in the central data warehouses we can research that data uh, we can increase our revenue growth. We can increase our saving opportunities there. We can develop and sell products. We can also create a multiple reports with which we can take actionable steps. The basic difference, uh, uh, the, uh, there are two different concepts in ETL, uh, the concept of ETL and the concept of ELT. So these are the two basic concepts. So what exactly ETL deals with? ETL is nothing but extracting of data from multiple data warehouses or databases, multiple files or any web applications, getting that data into a staging area. A staging area is nothing but where we can store the data. Every time we cannot go back to the data source and get the data at multiple times. Let's consider, for instance, a sale database will update on daily basis, which we can get on daily basis. But if we consider a, a banking data, if we consider an employee or a 
a company related data which isn't updated on daily basis an employee may not update his details on daily basis or a customer may not visit bank on daily basis so they, these type of data can be updated uh, maybe once a week maybe once a month so in order to store that data we need a staging area so staging area is nothing but where we can stage the data where we can transform the data transforming is nothing but where we can perform multiple logic building we can uh, if, if suppose we have around lakhs of data we are primarily focusing on certain records or certain months of data. We can transform, we can apply logic there and then load the data into data warehouse. So from data warehouse further, we can connect it to multiple reports or tabular models where we can perform multiple analysis. So the ETL deals with extraction process, transformation process and loading process. So for loading also in ETL, there are multiple loads. One is a full load where we load the data uh, every time we truncate and load the data. So what is truncate and load? If at all we are uh, dealing with multiple databases, we extract the data from there. We save it in the staging area where we perform some transformations. It's the middle layer where we perform transformations and then load the exact amount of data which we are focusing into data warehouses. Every time while we loading the data into a target, we truncate the previously created targets and load the data. That is called as full load. So the other concept is called as delta load. So delta load is primarily comparatively very fast than full load because it only deals with adding the data every time to the existing target data source. We won't truncate the previously uh, created or previously ingested data. If suppose there in target, if suppose there were around thousand of records and the next time uh, we are only dealing with uh, the, the uh, only dealing with the records in last six months, the thousand records which we are already present are prior to that six months. So in order to get the last six month data, we don't delete the existing thousand records and without deleting, we, we, uh, we ingest the data into existing the target that is called as delta, uh, delta load. So this is the basic difference between delta load and full load. What exactly the ETL is? Extract, transform, and load. So the basic uh, understanding of ETL and ELT. ELT is also a, a, a type of approach, which is nothing but extracting the data, loading the data, and transforming the data. So the transformation picture comes third in the step, while extract and loading is done prior to the transformation. So ETL is being used in approaches where the data is more in unstructured manner or where the data is available in images, audio or video um, uh, options where it takes significant amount of time to load the data. So rather transforming the data, we load the data first and then perform transformations uh, as per our requirement and then further uh, you could use that transformed data directly into any of the data analytics. So transforming and structured uh, maybe this can be a comparatively slow process than ETL but it's one of the highly approached or highly used processes nowadays. So the ELT primarily focuses uh, on the cloud storage technologies uh, such as data warehouses and data, la data lakes. So the basic difference between ETL and ELT is uh, ETL supports smaller amount of data, whereas ELT supports large amount of data. Storage requirements is comparatively low in ETL, whereas storage requirements in ELT is comparatively high as there is a large amount of raw data stored. Uh, if we check about the latency, uh, there is a huge latency but uh, as transformation need to be completed before storing the data in ETL, whereas in ELT, there isn't a, a much latency. There is a minimal processing done before storing the data and then uh, the transformation takes place. Uh, the maintenance as compared to ETL and ELT both differs. Uh, use of ETL with increase or we need to have a continuous maintenance because every time data changes, data source changes, we have to first transform the data. We have to different, we have to create multiple logics if there are any data changes. 
Yes, we have to change that logic and then load the data. Whereas in ETL, we are not focusing on transformation first. We are focusing on loading the data and then perform transformations. So it comparatively, it requires low maintenance. Uh, if we check about flexibility, uh, the ETL has a very low flexibility uh, as data sources and transformations need to be defined at the beginning of process. Whereas if we compare the flexibility of ELT, the flexibility is comparatively high as transformation need not to be defined first. We are primarily focusing on loading the data. The ETL is comparatively suitable for uh, as I said, uh, structured data or the data which is smaller amount, small in amount. Whereas ELT focuses on unstructured, semi-structured and structured all three together. It can be used for large amount of data sets. There are multiple ETL tools available in the environment or there are multiple two ETL tools available nowadays. Uh, one of the most common uh, used ETL tool is Informatica Power Center. We also have a concept called as Azure Data Factory. It's a pure cloud-based Azure tool, Azure integrated UI application, which focuses on ETL approaches. There are also tools such as Apache Airflow, uh, Talent Open Studio, it could be Google Cloud Dataflow. Google Cloud Dataflow is nothing but a tool built on as Google Cloud, similar like Azure. Uh, there is a tool called as AWS Data Pipeline. It is similar like Azure Data Factory and Azure. Just like AWS, it is integrated with Amazon Web Services, Amazon Web Services Cloud. So it is AWS Data Pipeline. Um, so there are multiple tools available. If you check the talent open studio, it's an open source tool. Whereas Pentao, it's a combination of open source as well as as a, a server based tool. If you check Informatica Power Center, it's a, a, a combination of both. Uh, the Informatica Power Center application is installed on on-premise, whereas the server is installed on cloud. Uh, if you check the Azure Data Factory, there won't be any um, server or in on-premise applications. It's a complete end-to-end cloud-based tool. It was introduced by Azure. Now we are going to focus on what is Azure Data Factory, why it is important, and how can it improves the performance of uh, any other ETL tool. I mean, if you compare any other ETL tool with ADF, we can use ADF over all other ETL tools. Uh, if you come if you check informatica where we require both on-premise as well as cloud application for server if you compare it with adf adf is comparatively more faster we don't require any on-premise uh, setup we don't require any on-premise installation it's an end-to-end cloud based tool uh, developed by azure which is nothing but a data integration service that allows you to create multiple pipelines so we can write multiple transformation between that pipelines we can automate that pipelines for data movement and we can transform the data at a very large scale so using data factory you can create multiple automated we can create multiple uh, event based pipelines or even based triggers for that pipelines where we can move the data from one data source to another or we can move the data from one specific data set to the same data set in that same database with uh, whatever transformations or whatever logic building we can do there so the use of adf the introduction of adf was made in the year 2015 initial release or was made in the year 2015 by azure the azure data factory version 2 was released in the year 2017. So the basic difference between the first version and version two is where we have got SSIS integration. The automation of pipelines came into picture in the year 2017. Earlier we were running pipelines manually or we can trigger pipelines manually. But in the year 2017, the, the concept of scheduled pipelines came into picture. The latest release of ADF was made in February 2023, where the introduction of flowlets, introduction of data capture previews, and a combination of Synapse notebook activity came into picture. In the year 2021, a new concept was introduced that is data flows. Data flows is nothing but it's a a complete ADF pipeline activity only, but where we don't 
code or concept of coding is not required. It's a complete end to end low code introduction, which was introduced in April 2021. Thank you.